For plank installation, we recommend staggering the end joints a minimum of 6 inches. For tile installation, we recommend staggering the end joints a minimum of 3 inches. Do not install four corners together as this will not provide a stable installation. To click the end joint of the plank or tile together, click the short side of the plank or tile vertically into the previous one by pressing it by hand and rolling it with a hand roller to ensure a fully compressed tight fit. For tile, use the same technique. To click the length joint of the plank or tile together, lift slightly to engage lock shifting it to properly match the end joint against the previous plank or tile. Rotate downward, clicking together for a tight fit. Use a small hand roller or seam roller to press and lock the compression fit end joint. Lock groove to tongue or tongue to groove for this application. For tile, use the same technique. If there are any gaps, we recommend using a small scrap piece of plank or tile with a lock on the edge. Lock the scrap piece to the area requiring tapping and lightly tap the edge of the material. This will bring the plank or tile edges tight together. Cut the plank or tile by scoring through the top wear layer with a utility knife, then snap the plank or tile across the score. Install adjoining rows as you did the first, one piece at a time. Holding the plank or tile at a slight angle, place it against the profile in the first row. Rotate the plank or tile down to secure the end joint, assuring that there are no gaps along the joint. The adjoining planks or tiles are aligned by sliding the long joint into position, shifting it to properly match the end joint against the previous plank or tile. Repeat until you reach the final row of material. To install the final row of planks or tiles, you will usually need to cut them. We recommend the following. Lay a panel on top of the last row installed. Lay another plank or tile against the edge of the wall. Mark the plank or tile underneath. Cut the plank or tile through the wear layer and snap along the score. Install the last row, leaving ample expansion space. When installing moldings, make sure no nails or screws enter the vinyl flooring or the expansion zone around the flooring perimeter, as it will prevent proper expansion and contraction of the structure and flooring. All transition moldings should provide a quarter inch expansion space to avoid pinching the flooring and allow the proper expansion space. Never nail or screw moldings through your new flooring. Make sure furniture legs have wide, weight-bearing, smooth, non-staining plastic floor protectors or non-staining felt pads. The protectors should be at least one inch in diameter and rest flat on the floor. The heavier the item, the wider the protector should be. Replace narrow dome furniture rests with weight-bearing, non-staining floor protectors of the appropriate width. If the installation of treads, risers, or wheelchair ramps is needed, the glue-down method should be used using IVC US I-Grip Permanent Adhesive. Apply the adhesive following the manufacturer's instructions. If you need additional assistance, call our technical information at 1-888-225-8287. Legacy luxury vinyl planks and tiles can also be used for light commercial and commercial applications. Whether you are creating a chic retail space or a modern office, Legacy offers you both style and performance. The same easy installation methods as previously shown are used for commercial applications, saving business owners time and money. Plus, Legacy is extremely low maintenance and easy to clean, allowing facility owners and managers to spend less time taking care of their floor and more time focusing on their business. Please note, warranty exclusions with respect to rolling loads. 
If you have frequent or heavy rolling conditions, Click products can be glued down to help reduce the risk of joint separation from rolling load traffic. However, our warranty still excludes any problems associated with rolling loads.